God may not love you, but I love these figures. These are the Playmates 1988 uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, these figures are quite prolific to the brand. Um, I think the, the contract with Mirage with Playmates to create these figures is what actually spawned the original um, 1987 series to uh, begin production, which I think is really cool. And nowadays, they're just really nice figures, and I wanted to talk about them because I have a lot to say. I recently got these, actually. Um, for a long time, I had the Storage Child Turtles, and I still kind of use those as my main Playmates Turtles. But having these was really fun. It's really cool. I do really enjoy them, and I do want to talk about them because there's a lot of like great stuff here that most people don't see. I mean, it's, it's more than meets the eye, but it's a wrong franchise, guys. Wrong franchise, Daniel. Come the fuck on. Um... Their sculpt is actually really nice with the detail. If we take a look at here at Leo, if we look at his bicep, actually, all the turtles actually have, there's actually two different left and right biceps for all of them. So as you can see, Leo has this kind of like, it bifurcates up here. And then he has this little squiggly over here. But then, Raph has one where it bifurcates at the bottom. But then he has the same squiggly as Leo. Mikey has one that bifurcates at the top. But then a squiggly that bifurcates at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. And Raph's and uh, Leo's bifurcates at the top. And then Donnie has one that bifurcates at the bottom. But then the squiggly that bifurcates at the bottom as well. So, I believe, if I recall, that leaves them all with technically unique biceps. Which I mean, like, yeah, okay, whatever. They're, uh, their veins are different amongst all of them, so what? But it's just a way in which these figures have a lot of great attention to detail and passion. You can tell the people at Varner Studios were fans of the comics, and were probably excited to work on this. I mean, just as the line goes forward, you can see the passion. No sane man sculpts a... Uh, a dwarf Don without some love of the franchise. You need to be invested for that to happen. Their legs also are kind of unique. They would sculpt three different legs, as you can see here. So there would be a flat-footed leg, a bent leg, a bent left leg, and then there would be a bent right leg and a flat left foot. And they would all get different variations of this. Uh, Raph would get both feet flat on the floor. So he's the easiest to stand. A lot of people say these are hard to stand. I don't have too much trouble. Once you find the spot, you find the spot. But um, some they can be pains in the asses sometimes while trying to find it, especially if you want to like do posts where you move their legs. Leo and Donnie both have the same flat right foot, uh, bent left foot, and then Mikey has the uh, flat left foot and the bent right foot. I really like that about them. You know, I know a lot of people just kind of wish that they'd be flat-footed and be done with it, but... I think that this adds a lot of nice dynamicism to them. I don't know if that's a word. But it makes them very dynamic, and it makes them really interesting to look at. They're always in a battle stance, which I think is fun. Now, you might also notice about them, they all have unique head sculpts. So, let's start with Raph, because I, uh, I think I like his the most, honestly. He has this kind of open, gritting teeth. And the teeth are just white on the green, but, you know, when you just look at it, it just kind of naturally creates that line. He has his kind of normal angry eyes. They all have unique eyes, which I think is really nice. Yeah, it just looks the nicest, in my opinion. He has a good mix between looking up and looking forward. You notice that about toys, that they'll often be slightly looking up, so when you're playing with them, it, you can kind of see their face. If they're looking totally forward, maybe their brow of the character or something will obfuscate their eyes. It's just nicer to get to see all the details. Donnie has this kind of gritting his teeth, but on both ends, they pop out. His mouth does meet in the middle. I have a suspicion that Donnie was the first one sculpted, and then all the others were like variations on him. His eyes are kind of like these triangle ones, if you can see. Quite nice, quite nice. Ooh. Leo and Mikey, kind of fun. They have their teeth gritting, but only the one end. You'll begin to notice, actually, there's a little bit of a paint error, or I guess just, like, unpainted detail. This mouth, the mouth is open on this side, but they didn't paint any white in there. I guess it's just because it's small detail, but you'll notice on, like, the Mutatin' Turtles and the Giant Turtles, 
that side of the mouth does get painted. So this kind of gets left out. Um, I do really like Mikey's head. He might have, like, at least my second favorite of the bunch. But I just like how this looks. Especially when I have it turned. This is a really fun look for him. I like to display him like this. And then lastly, we have Leo. Which I think has the, probably the worst head sculpt, honestly. It's kind of the sloppiest. Um, the way he is designed, he's looking way too far up. So, you know, from a front angle, he's just, like, staring off. But his eyes, they're just, like, off to the side. They're kind of this teardroopy face. Uh, Mikey also has, like, these kind of squintier eyes, but they're just off to the side. And from this, most angles, he just looks sad. His nose feels droopier than the others. He has his bite off to the right, which I think is nice. Something notable is that Super 7 actually altered his uh, his face a little bit, and that looks way better. It overnight went from my least favorite head sculpt of the Playmates Turtles to my favorite Super 7 head sculpt, which is I think is pretty cool. It just, I, I do like this expression for him. It's just, you know, needed better execution. Another part about the designs I really love is their colors. As you can see, they're all different shades of green, which I think these uh, figures were actually the first to do, like a TMT design wise. And now it's like a staple. Almost every take of the turtles has them with different shades of green, and it kind of started here. Raph has kind of like the default green. He has that pretty, I don't want to say neon, it's just a nice, vibrant, safe green. It's in the middle. Not particularly anything. A pure green, I guess you could say. Um, I have his sniffles. I apologize. Um, Leo has this darker green, which I think is really good for him because. You know, blue, green does not contrast as well as red, green, purple, green, or orange, green. So giving him this darker green and this little lighter blue actually really helps up his contrast through the values instead of the hues, which I think is really smart of them. And it helps, you know, balance out. When I look at a group of them, I'm not looking at one of them. I'm looking at all of them, if that makes sense. Um, Mikey has one of my favorite choices. He has this very pretty deep, uh, soft, cool green, which I really love. This one get, appears in a lot of media, and it's you can tell why. It just looks great with the orange. I will say that the storage shell uh, Mikey uses a, a little bit of a hotter orange, and I think that looks better, but I do really like this combination a lot. And Donnie has probably my favorite creative choice of these uh, designs. Using this really... This darker tan green, I think, is good because it helps. It's the most drastically different shade, and it helps kind of communicate that Don is a little bit of, like, the real rebel of the group, I feel. Um, I remember in Mirage when he um, would go against Leo's order sometimes, and it wouldn't go, like, particularly good or bad. He just did because it's what he thought was right and what he thought was better. You know, Raph... He'll run off, he'll blow some off some steam, but he'll ultimately reconvene with the group. I feel like Donnie is maybe the only one that would actually seriously defect and just do whatever the fuck he wants because he doesn't agree with what any of them are doing and he's confident in what he says, which I really enjoy and I like that this design, it feels like that. I could picture this Donnie storming out of the room and saying, I'm not doing this, I'm going to do my own thing and then just doing that and, you know, instead of Raph, you know, he eventually just kind of comes back because he realizes he was kind of being emotional. I like Raph either way, it's just like, he's not really a rebel. Now, I also want to talk about the packaging. Um, I got these um, from the, I believe the, let me check here, it is the 19, the 1998 release, which is technically, you know, a decade after their initial release, but they're identical. I would not say they're different enough to warrant being separated from the originals. The front box art is pretty nice, I guess. I do enjoy the original, you know, pink brick wall a little bit more. And this airbrush art style doesn't totally look nice. I, I think that it's your posing. They need to be a little more dynamic in the poses. But I still enjoy it. It's cute. It's nice. Um, the bubble is also just nicely placed. Good front. On the back, they have this cute little story. The evolution of the turtles. A boy's bowl of pet turtles falls into the stretch of an underground... Under, underground City sewer. I, I assumed most sewers were underground, but whatever. They land on Splinter, a penniless and but powerful ninja master who lived in the muck. I I, I don't know. If, if I was in New York, I don't know if I'd be living in the sewer if I was homeless, but, you know, hey. Splinter's enemy, Shredder, leader of the evil Foot Clan, pours a disgusting green ooze over Splinter and accidentally the turtles, hoping to zap them dead. I guess it was like an electrocution scheme? <laughs> I, I like that. This is people don't realize that the Playmates Turtles actually have like a unique backstory and such. Like they're technically their whole own take. 
Instead, the turtle's pets mutated into turtle teens, and Splinter turns into the biggest rat ever to face a trap. Splinter, the big cheese eater, teaches the turtles the way of the ninja. Together, they form a kick-stomping fighting team for the side of good against the deadly Foot Clan. Get ready for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I really love the, uh, the, the, the secondary title of The Big Cheese Eater from Splinter. That's, that's fun. Um, interesting enough, this art is really cute. They don't actually have unique colors in this art, which I think is interesting. Um, I don't think they had a unique colors in the original box art either, which is nice. I guess it's neat to see it. Um, I guess you'll also notice when looking at these turtles that they have different belts. They're actually totally uniquely sculpted if you look closely. Um, uh, they have, Mikey on the back has the holes to hold his uh, nunchucks. Don't try to make him hold the nunchucks though. I've seen many a nunchuck break because people try to do that. Um, Leo and Donnie have the same uh, over the neck straps, not over the neck, over the shoulder straps. A uh, criticism I have is I wish Donnie only had one over the shoulder strap, them both having double straps. For Leo, it makes sense because you know two swords, but Donnie only has one bow staff, so I feel like one strap is enough. And then Raph has the little um, holders on for his size, but on his back, he actually has, oh. He has a little holder for a push dagger, which I love, love, love. On these boxes as well, there's also a little, uh, there's a little blurb about each of the turtles. I only have the ones for Donnie, Mikey, and Leo, so I'll only be reading those. Raphs exists out there. I'm sure you can look it up. I just don't particularly feel like doing that. You can do your own research. You're an intelligent person. Figure it out. But for Michelangelo, he is the wild and crazy tortle. I don't know how to say that. Vital tortistics. Weapons, nunchakus. Turtle fist daggers, ninja stars, comma. His birthplace is Woody's Pet Shop, Pennsylvania. So I guess he got, like, shipped into New York. That's interesting. He is about five, uh, I was about to say five inches. He's about five feet tall. He weighs 150 pounds. His age is 15 and a half in people years. I think it's interesting because that implies that there were teenage turtles that were mutated into being teenaged instead of, like, growing up from, like, being, like, a toddler turtle to being a grown turtle. It's kind of fun. A lot of takes kind of vary between how that works, so they just need to have that in there. Shell, hard and polished to a waxy finish. I guess he takes care of himself. I mean, hey, good for him. Michelangelo was a party reptile, even though the splinter shredder, even though, oh, even though the sinister shredder may be slicing his way through the manhole cover, Mike stays cool. Cool, because he's the master of whirling nunchakus. It takes eight pounds of pressure per square inch to break a bone. Nunchakus generate 90. In the midst of the most perilous battles, Mike can be swinging his deadly nunchakus in one hand while dangling a wedge of pizza in the other. Mike dreams to someday use Shredder's cutting armor to grate cheese on his pepperoni and ice cream pizza. I think they had a little gimmick back then for the turtles eating, like, gross pizzas, which I, I guess, but... Interesting, I guess he likes ice cream. I, he would. Mike would fucking like ice cream, pepperoni, cheese, pizza. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I actually, all these turtles have unique ages. I assume they were all like, I just feel like most people, everyone kind of assumes the turtles like the same age, but they're always, they're a little slightly different ages. I didn't realize that uh, Mike could be from Pennsylvania. Hell, he's from a swing state. He's, he ought to vote. <laughs> That'll, uh, his vote really matters in the election. Moving on to Leonardo, he is the battle commander of the turtles. For vital tortistics, his weapons are the katana blades, turtle fist daggers, ninja stars, comma. Those last three are going to be consistent amongst all of them, so I'm going to stop reading them from here on. His birthplace is McCannon Pets Emporium from Chiskippi Bay. I, so, sorry if you're from there, by the way. I just, I'm looking at that word for the first time in my life right now. His height is five foot one on two legs. I... I assumed it was on two legs. Thanks for specifying, though. He is 16 years old. He weighs 155 pounds. I guess that's the uh, that's the extra inch speaking for those five pounds. His shell is bulletproof and shock resistant. So uh, he he can he loves electrical wiring. I guess he he probably grew. He's used to it. He got started wrestling with Raph and the <laughs> the electrical wiring of the so of the sewers and the subway, like his fluorescent namesake. 
Leonardo is the perfect turtle. In the in the idolous eyes of his allies, he is known as the unofficial commander of the turtles and Splinter's star pupil. Because of his keen eyesight and sensitive hearing, Leonardo is extremely well balanced, which makes him more skillful when wielding his ever flashing katana blades. No matter how dangerous the situation, Leo doesn't mind sticking his neck out. His primary objective in life is cut the shredder down the size. That's very fitting, honestly. I always pictured Leo as being ruthlessly loyal, ruthlessly going after Shredder passionately of all the turtles. So I like that that's in there. I'm That was probably in the comic. I haven't read all Mirage yet. I've only read, like, bits and pieces of it. But from what I can gather, I really I really enjoy Leo's and his, uh, I won't say fanaticism to Splinter, but his loyalty to Splinter. I, I love that he's the perfect turtle. I guess he's, uh, they're, they're taking favorites right now. But yeah, he's, uh, I'm assuming he's the oldest, I think. Which makes sense. I, Raph or, Raph or Leo would be the oldest in my mind. Donatello. The turtle's creative genius. His weapons are the bow staff, as long as the others. His birthplace was Joe Pet Palace in Slokahama. That, I don't think, I'm, that's not in America. It's interesting. I guess, this, I wonder, does this version of uh, Donnie have the accent from there? Watch that be, actually be like from like Arkansas, and I'm an idiot. His height is that he is four feet on two legs, so he's... I'm not saying he's represented here, but he's, I guess, he's the short one. He weighs 145 pounds with his shell. So, I guess if you catch him without the shell, we ought to weigh him. And he is 15 years old. Interesting. He's actually younger than Mikey. Mikey's almost always the youngest, so... Kind of interesting. His, his shell is hard as tank armor. I wonder if he fortified it himself. Donatello is the best idea turtle you'll ever find. He is the brains of the group and the designer of the turtle's vehicles. Rather than use his bow or brawn, Donna would prefer inventing some device or clever apparatus to foil the foe. Still, Don is the most powerful reptile with his staff, which enables him to parry, vault, and crush. Even Don gets turtle-sized with pleasure in stomping the foot. After a tough battle, Don relaxes by watching programs of his own invention, Turtle Vision. So I guess in this universe, Don just like invented the, he invented like a new form of, I guess, like identifying like radio waves for television. Good for him, honestly. I, I hope uh, he finds some good programming. Kind of interesting. It's, I think it's notable that they uh, include that he likes having gadgets, but I don't remember Don like having really gadgets much at all in the, in the toy line. I mean, like it, even across variants, I can't recall. They, they didn't have like a cyborg Don variant. Which I think is a massive missed opportunity. I can't believe they didn't do that. Moving on to accessories. As you can see, they all come with these standard sets of accessories. They come with the comma, the push dagger, the other... I have to check what the fucking box says. They have, like, different names. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's just the, the, the turtle fist daggers. So, you know, the two push daggers and then two uh, ninja stars. And then they have their signature weapons. Donnie comes with two bow staffs, interestingly enough, because he only has one. I assume it's because when they did the trees, they thought it'd be awkward to just print it only on one side. So I guess they just gave them two in case, like, one of them broke. You know what? Comes in handy, I'm sure. Um, to quickly talk about the generic weapons first and get them out of the way. The comma... It's kind of neat. I mean, be because the ends, is, are, the ends are so rounded, it kind of looks like those, uh, you know, those poles that they use, like, tug on comedians or doing a bad job but it's interesting the handle is nicely detailed i like this wrappings here it's pretty common throughout the these accessories but they look nice you can have them hold these it's kind of like a generic sword if you don't want to just give them katana leo's katanas it's fun i find myself using them every now and then this like wedge dagger is a little awkward when you put it in their hands let me do it here when you put it in their hands it kind of like it just faces inwards, so you can't really get them attacking. You can get them, like, gesturing at it. And like, eh. But uh, that's about their usefulness. They don't really do much else. Um, this dagger is way more useful. This is definitely the best of the generic accessories. Um, because when you put it in their hands, not only is it just nice, because, you know, it's just a push blade, but also you can get it put out, but then you also, like, slide it over the hand. And because there's, the clearance is so nice, you can really, you know, kind of... Be specific about what angle you want it to be at, which I really appreciate for photos. You can really get them like perpendicular with the camera. It just it's handy. I mean, 
it's a good accessory. I really wish that uh, the others had that kind of uh, usefulness. Um, next, you have the Ninja Stars, which are kind of useless. Um, I can't even get them to hold them. They're just awkward, and they always fall out of their hands. I can't find a use for them. If you can, I don't know. Send me a uh, Blue Sky. Send me a picture of them holding it and be like, you fucking idiot. But getting into their iconic weapons, here we have Leo's Katana. That's right. These things will naturally get bent over time as you just play with them, put them in his back. That's fine. Just you know, I guess be wary. Don't try to get him too bent. But it's okay. I mean, honestly, for my sword shell Leo, I just start giving him Usagi's long swords, and I think that looks better. But these are all right. Mikey's nunchucks. They have this wire here. They have the ends. But say the nunchuck there, they do kind of bend. But like, just be careful with them. Be mindful. If these things break, it's just annoying to replace. Like, it's not hard. It's just annoying. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, it takes some time to like get them to get the Nash like do a solid bend, but you know, just hold them in a pose for a few weeks. Um, here we have Donnie's bow staff. It's kind of nice. I mean, yeah, it's just a big stick, but it's a it's a nicely sized big stick. It's about like perfect size. I think you'd want for Donnie's bow staff. I like the wrappings in the middle. It looks nice. It kind of looks like on the the wrappings don't look like they're on the bow staff as much as they're in the bow staff, which is kind of strange. Raph's size might be my favorite of the signature weapons. They just look nice. I think they're perfectly sized for Raph. Handle's good. I like the proportion. It's just a really nice side accessory. 10 out of 10. I love it. To talk about articulation, um, these figures for retro toys are honestly quite articulated. You, They're seven point figures, so you get a swivel up the head. It goes about all the way around, I think, if you push it. I just don't really feel like it, but, you know. It goes where you want it to be. He has swivel at the arms, goes all the way around. He'll have swivel at the forearm. Then he'll have these little ball joints. Then go out, around, little circle. Be careful with these. These can lock up and, you know, it can be a problem. But, you know, it's a simple articulation scheme, but you can really tell that you that um, you can get a lot done with it, honestly. I've done a lot of fun poses with them, and it, they're just, they're great. And the storage gel turtles only have a swivel instead of a ball joint, and you can still get great poses out of those, too. I would say the ball joint maybe isn't totally necessary, but I also don't score in it being here. Um, Raph especially looks nice with his... Uh, Raph especially can look nice in poses because just the way size is just a little nicer to pose. I think Leo might pose the worst out of all of them. Donnie is a little restrictive. Um, I just enjoy posing Raph a lot. He's probably... Um, to do a quick ranking, I definitely think that Raph is my favorite. Um, then I would say Leo is my least favorite. Mikey is my second favorite, and Donnie is my third favorite. So... Raph, Mikey, Donnie, Leo is probably my ranking. I it's just it's just Leo's face, honestly. I think Leo needed to look a little nicer. But you know, I definitely recommend these figures. Of course I do. These are fantastic guys. These are honestly, I mean, they could be your definitive turtles for, you know, a smaller display, your retro display especially. Um, I do plan to make a video about these sword shell turtles to go a little more in depth about them. I do prefer those turtles, but these are still great. I mean, I would recommend if you're a big, huge turtle fan, you should get them. If you're a rich, if you're a retro toy collector, you should get them. These are a must have. And as a final note, when I was inspecting the sculpt, I um uh, I I noticed that if you actually look at their necks. Yeah, I mean, see, no Adam's apple. So, I am proud of the TMT for their generation-wide transition because, you know, of course, no Adam's apple, so they're all trans. Um, we're proud of them, you know. Modern day, it's, it takes a lot of bravery to come out as mutants and trans, so, you know. Good for them. I We love them for that. Have a good day. I really hope you enjoyed this review. And um, I have some more fun reviews planned, especially after these guys. So yeah, have a good day. My name's Daniel.
bye, I guess. <laughs>